Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. Um, today may be a little less of a chat, more of a rant. We'll see where it goes. But today we're going to talk about spiritual superiority. Um, I was almost going to call it spiritual arrogance, but I want to play superiority because of the perspective stuff. And also talking about how the truth will set you free, since it's being spiritual. But before I break down what I mean and what I'm going to throw at you, <laughs> Let me introduce myself and give you some background so you know what I'm talking about. Or you know whether I'm talking about something that makes any sense or not. Should I trust? No script. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. Hey Patrick, good to see you. Um, I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which helps helping women create balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also what started these talks um, almost three years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. Today we're episode number 880. That's a milestone of sorts, I guess. And the topic today is about spiritual superiority. And I'm going to explain what that means. Um, and I'm going to use this to apply to things you may not expect, I think. We'll see. And also about how the truth literally will set you free. Well, figuratively, maybe. We'll see. Okay, trusting that I know what I'm going to talk about, let's jump in, shall we? Um, and by the way, this is my Facebook Live I do every day in case you haven't seen me before. I do this on my Facebook page, and I'll tell you all about where you can find the replays and everything else at the back end of this broadcast. I've been noticing lately quite a few people posting, particularly on social media, because it seems to be where I spend most of my time. I'm not going to judge that, just a choice. Who act like they have it all together. And certainly the people who have done that in the business world for a long time as coaches and speakers saying, you know, I've made millions, you should do what I do and I'll help you get there and you can pay me billions so I can show you how to do it. Which is an interesting circle right there. But I'm going to get into that. But I'm also aware of people who seem to act like they're good all together emotionally and mentally, which to me comes under the heading of spirituality. And I'll explain it this way. There are people who are financially they look like everything together by the way they present themselves. But there are also people who are attempting to portray their character as being all together too, which is really trying to look like they're spiritually superior. And I'm saying it from this point of view because we have a distinct, um, what's the word looking for? Tendency to try and keep it all together. Now, let me preface this by saying, in case you haven't heard me before, I'm English which automatically puts me in a place where I attempt to be, super, sorry, I tend to be looked at as being aloof and superior because of the stiff upper lip we were, I was raised with. <laughs> I've loosened up a lot since I've been in California, for sure, but there's definitely a tendency in the culture in England to sort of hold it all together. Although, frankly, when people like Boris Johnson, it's very overt that people don't look that together. <laughs> I had to dig that one out. Um, let's just say Brexit's on my mind a lot recently because of what's been happening, and that's a whole other conversation I'm not going to do here. But what I'm aware of is that a lot of people who, in the conscious world, being coaches, speakers, teachers, leads on stage, um, authors, that sort of thing, oftentimes portray that they have an image that has to be sacrosanct. So they have to be so perfect, and people look at them and go, wow, you're amazing, and stuff like that. Now, to be self-effacing, <laughs> to be transparent, you may notice that during my weekly broadcast, during, excuse me, during my, my daily broadcast on weekdays, I dress up nice, you know, I have a dress shirt on, look really cleaned up. Weekends are more casual. And also I've got good lighting and a good microphone. That's plenty because I want to look decent on camera so that the, that way it's not distracting. So let me say that again because I just realized what I said. I don't do that to look good on camera. I do it so that when you're watching my videos, you're not distracted by how I look. At least I think so, hope so. Which is why the lighting's better and I've got a microphone because when I first started doing these, I was doing them with a pretty dimly, dimly lit room without a microphone and people said they couldn't hear what I was saying. So that's intentionally to support you. So I just want to be clear about that. But at the same time, I do put some thought into what I'm going to present myself as because I want to make sure that, that, oh, how do I say this? Oh, <laughs> back myself in another corner. <laughs> that I want to present myself a certain way so that you may trust what I say. Now, yeah, and that I'm going to be believable. Okay, let me be, let me be too truly transparent. So the truth will set you free. I do have an agenda that I want to make sure that my information lands for you. 
that is reality. That's what I wanted to do. But I'm also clear that what I'm telling you is what I've learned, not something I'm trying to convince you of that may not be true. And this is the thing where I have the issue with the spiritual superiority thing. There are plenty of people out there teaching and leading and speaking and being all this work who run mastermind groups, who run seminar trainings, who run companies, who run thousands of people through their programs, but don't live up to the truth of who they are. And they present, and it's, it's literally some people, there are some very, um, how do I say this, major players, big hitters in the industry. I'm not going to name any names because they're loyalists to certain people and I don't want to upset any people on this one. But I'm going to ask you and invite you to do, to do your due diligence. If you're investing money, time, effort with coaches, speakers, teachers, make sure you know what you're getting into, including if you're working with me. I mean, I'm very clear about that. I, I do, as I said before, and I, and I do it with, my, with anybody who wants, work, works, who wants to work with me, we've got to talk before we work together. You can't buy my you can't buy coaching with me unless you initially have a conversation so we know we want to work together because that for me is a vital piece that any coach that you want to find out more about if they don't offer a complimentary conversation up front and I've had some debates about this with some other coaches if you don't have the opportunity to have a complimentary comp complimentary conversation with them before you start I'm pretty wary about working with them. Because I want to know if it's worth investing with them. I don't want to spend money with them to find out if I want to spend money with them. That doesn't make any sense. But there are people out there who do portray themselves like, you know, I'm so good, I'm so superior, I'm so special, that you've got to pay a minimum just to get in the door. That's like playing in, that's like gambling, I guess. There's, didn't mean to do it that way, but there's about, you know, there's an ante in, in, in poker games. There's also some ante to work with coaches, and that I don't agree with. Now, that's a personal thing. It's not saying the rules of the road or structure because some coaches I know out there who are extremely good, but they also charge a fee to work with them to start with. Like, as their, their consultation, their first session is a pay-to-play event. And I've been sitting on the fence about that myself. And personally, for me right now, it doesn't work. It might change, though, just to be clear. But right now, it's not that way because I want to make sure that anybody who gets this, you can see for yourself where the value is. And to work with somebody... Who, hi Marianne, nice to see you. Marion, sorry, I said Marianne. Marion, that's better. I've been in America too long, I conflate the, the, the way of saying names. So for me, it's very key that when you're working with people, if you're a client looking to work with somebody, I put it that framing. And I've been a client, I'm a client with people too. I'm in, I'm in a mastermind group myself as a participant because I'm always learning and growing myself. I do not have it all together, just to be clear about that. And those who know me <laughs> and certain people who have commenting on my posts have called me on my stuff. So thank you for that, Marion. I appreciate that. And hello to you. So those people who have this um, <laughs> Teflon coating, that's a good way of putting it, who are very attached to their presentation, are very attached to their, um, I'm sorry, I can't put this accurately. They're attached to their position and attached to their status. So they're not willing to show any sign of weakness. And it was actually recently that someone, someone has posted about vulnerability in men. So this is going to take a different piece and put it into this conversation. So bear with me for a second. I have a couple of women, there's a few women I follow in particular, who are very strong talking about masculine and feminine energetics. And one of them I know personally, so we're very good friends. And I love what she talks about. The other one I don't know so well personally, but she wrote something recently that really, it caught me off guard for a second. Because some people argue with her on this. And the, the, the conversation that was in the post was about how real men or masculine men don't show vulnerability. And I'm going to make a point here. So again, stay with me. <laughs> because there's something about this journey. And, and I know that she was talking about how there's men who have gone through the feminine arc and that's something I went through myself. So I know personally what it feels like. And yes, there was a part of me that has in previous times when I was in my unaware, unconscious, non, um, let's say it, it wasn't macho by any means, but it was a beta male style. I would have vulnerability, but it was from a place of weakness, not from a place of strength. Yeah, okay, now I'm going to, yeah, okay, now I'm seeing where I'm going to go. So, and in this conversation, there was a point about, you know, ma masculine men are strong. They don't, they're fearless. They, they don't show vulnerability. And I disagree with this. For me, and this comes into the truth about coaching as well and speaking, is anybody who leads, this is the piece, anybody who leads who doesn't have the freedom to show vulnerability and who doesn't trust that their audience will accept their vulnerability doesn't deserve to lead. Woo, 
I just had a, I had a bit of a, a bit of goosebumps when I said that. It's like, does that really land? This spiritual superiority, this spiritual aloofness, because that's why I practiced myself for a long time, much aloofness about the spirituality, has a certain um, a Teflon coating. It's not legit. And so my point, I guess I want to get to the bottom line of this, is how the coaching profession and speaking and leading and being a mentor for other people has to include not chinks in the armor, but a certain humility in the work that we do. I am very clear in my work with clients that I am being I'm humbled by what how much they trust me. And that's the thing. A lot of people out there coaching, they're they're so together because they've done all. I mean, I've got a lot of qualifications, and certificates, and training and stuff myself. Doesn't mean a damn thing if I can't show my heart to my clients. And I do that as much as I can through my live talks as well. And I definitely find when I post stuff on Facebook, <coughs> excuse me. I do know that I sometimes put things out there where I stick my foot in my mouth by saying things I shouldn't say. So I, I'm clear that I'm not going to hold in my position because I know I'm going to make mistakes. And that, for me, I would like to think makes me a better leader and a better coach because I see my humanity. Because if I can't see my own humanity, how the hell am I going to see my client's humanity? So my, my piece, I say piece of resistance, no. My piece I want to drop here as a teaching or as an invitation or as a observation may be more accurate is that if you are looking to work with somebody as a coach as a guide as an expert as a consult as a consultant whatever it is will they let you see them fully will they present such a perfect image that you're almost in awe of them which frankly isn't the right way to go about business so my What I'm looking at is how to see which both sides of the coin here. So there's a piece in that I want to talk about, which is find people you can trust. Trustability, there it is. Trustability, for me, comes from a place where I can see somebody's heart, somebody's humanity, somebody's authenticity, and somebody's ability to recover from mistakes, recover from failures. And I've made many mistakes in my life, many. And I talked about relationship path, that I've made some pretty heinous mistakes in my relationships experiences that really put me off course. But frankly, because of those, it pushed me the direction I'm going in now, where I feel like I'm much more aligned. So when you're looking to work with somebody, I'm imploring, inviting, recommending, suggesting to you that not only do you check out their, their qualifications, but you check out their heart. Because that, for me, is the, is the key that opens up the ability to work together. It's having humanity meet humanity. So that when coach and client are working together the coach brings wisdom guidance understanding and learning but at the heart level of, of humanity so when they meet their client they can be familiar at the same level that that's actually what in a lot of ways what I went learned through my master's program at University of Santa Monica which really understand is the counselor we already knew our client was whole our job was to help remind them of the truth so they can get back there and help them go through any challenges traumas are in the way to get back to their wholeness because this is the thing I want to say as a coach speaking to clients if you're looking and if you're thinking about this is none of you are broken you may have forgotten your wholeness but that's the thing as a coach my job would be to help you remember your wholeness and find your way back to it so you can stay in your wholeness easily for many people out there they think their mistakes their failures in life are who they are and that's not true the same is true for those who are coaches and experts who don't recognize that their failures and their uh, mistakes can't be owned they can be and the more that we step into our truth as leaders the more that those who follow us can step into their leadership too interesting I didn't plan to be this talk but that's where it came out I think it's really what I want to say so a couple things I'm going to put in the comments as invitations some links for you I hope this makes sense by the way if any questions comments please put them below and respond I appreciate that my um invitations that I put in the comments is to have a chat with me if you are looking for support and guidance as a coach I'd offer that to you and we can definitely have a conversation again complimentary because I promise that's what we, what I do um, that'll be a chat we can have secondly I'll put a link in the comments to my books I did mention my book and as I mentioned yesterday and I've been ranting about it for a few days now about the self-love practice I'll put a comment in there I'll put a link in there for my self-love meditation it's an audio uh, and written guide for you to really practice how to love yourself more fully because as a lesson journey I've been on for a, for a long time now, still am, not done with it by any stretch of the imagination. So I hope this made some sense to you. So 
So those are the links I recommend. Replays if you haven't seen my broadcast before. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned. You take a breath is good. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook. You can watch me live on that page, which is Barry Selby. If you haven't watched me live before and you want to be reminded, there's a button somewhere on the broadcast or a, or a three dots you can click on for more information. And one of those items is be reminded next time I go live or be notified next time I go live. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, feel free to watch my replays. There's two places you can find them. One is on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page. You'll find probably a half to two thirds of my broadcast there because Facebook doesn't save all of them for some reason there. However, I do have a saved place on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby also. So please subscribe to my channel, which is Facebook dot, sorry, youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where every single one of my talks are listed. I'll make sure of that. So that's about it. I hope this made sense to you. And if there's any questions, thoughts you have about it, please let me know. Either message me or reach out to me through social media um, which is messaging me, or right here in the broadcast. And with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again same time tomorrow. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.